What's up guys, Shane here with Fugitec 3D Printing and today I'm going to give you my official review of the Easy 3D Nano 3D Printer. Welcome back guys. So this is the second time I'm recording this video because my microphone was not on for the first one and I rambled a lot. So I'm going to shrink it down because there is no way that a review of this video, a review of this printer should be very long at all. This printer is a toy, an absolute toy. It is not much better than a uh, 3D printing pen in my opinion, especially for the price. So we're gonna, let me talk you a little bit about what, like some features of the printer, how it works, and I'm gonna tell you why I don't like it and why I'm not recommending anyone to buy this. So if you wanted to like stop watching the video right now, my recommendation is not to buy it. But if you're curious on why and the features of it, I'm gonna go over that quickly right now. So the build volume of this is 90 by 110 by 110. So it's a very, very small cube. It's barely bigger, if not just as big as any one of your one of the Monoprice Select Mini printers, which I have two down here, um, and they print fantastic. This one, not so much. Um, so also with this is you do get a flexible uh, magnetic bed that is uh, pretty doggone hard to pull off really hard to pull off. It is non-heated. The extruder only goes up to 230 degrees centigrade and without a part cooling fan, which is the largest downfall of this machine, you really get pretty crummy prints out of it unless you print really slow. But even at that, you'll start to get some drooping and just some buttery looking prints. They're not gonna be nice and crisp. You're definitely not gonna get crisp prints out of this. So regardless of the pictures that you see online with this printer, you're not gonna get crisp prints out of it. That's the build volume, the build plate, the hot end slash extruder is this little, very, very wobbly, janky hot end on these very small, maybe five millimeter smooth rods. Uh, and a the belt has got to be maybe four millimeters, maybe five millimeters wide. The belt is very, very tiny. And the way that it's run, it's run with a single motor that ties to the front two that pull it up, then they end up just gliding around on these four threaded rods. They're like M5 or maybe M4s. They're pretty small that raise and lower the gantry and more of an H-bot. And the reason why you know it's an H-bot is because you've got the two sides and an H going across the middle. It is uh, not a true XY because the belts would loop a little differently. So this is an H-bot style 3D printer in this little tiny cube. Uh, and the frame is made of all of plastic. Uh, I think this base plate is also plastic. And again, you can see where the one motor goes in the bottom. So it's very weird the way they've done it. There's only one NEMA motor in here. The other two are those very small silver kind of motors that don't really have a lot of torque. Um, so that's kind of weird. Uh, also this motor, the extruder does not have very uh, strong gearing to it as well. So that it, it's kind of hard when it prints, it, it struggles and it does under extrude. Uh, with several different types of filaments. So I was not, it was just one that I used and they all were dry. I dried them and tried again. Still same issues with that. Uh, in order to print, you press that button. That's it. It's all you can do. You have no other control except to start the print, pause the print. And it's a pause, not a stop, which I'll tell you about in a minute why that's such a pain in the butt. In the back here, uh, there is the, this little switch so in the back here, there's this little switch. So right now it's in the middle, so it's on print. Forward, reverse, print in the middle. That's it. So if you wanna load your filament, you do that. It'll start pulling it in. It'll heat up the nozzle first, then it'll start pulling it in. Reverse, same thing. Heat up the nozzle, then it'll pull it out. Go back to normal print. It'll eventually stop at some point. Uh, I've had it go for like a minute before it finally stopped. I don't know why I did that. Uh, you have your micro SD card reader, which it came with a um, unbranded one gig micro SD card space to put in to connect your printer to your computer. And then you have the power adapter right here. It comes with a little brick power adapter as one does not fit inside of here. That's it for the internals. Again, looking here at the gantry, you can kind of see how it goes back and forth, forward and back. But, um, it is so wobbly. I mean, granted, it's not gonna get this much force on it, but it's still, you're not printing anywhere fast because you're gonna get a lot of play. I mean, a ton of play in this. And we're talking maybe 10 to 15 millimeters. And that's me just gently pulling back and forth on this. It doesn't really twist at all. And the side to side is actually decently sturdy. It doesn't wobble too much this way, but that front to back is pretty bad. 
So some reasons why I don't like this printer. Uh, first off, leveling it is an absolute nightmare. At least in my opinion it is. Because of this, this mat doesn't really like seat in properly every time. So you kind of have some issues with trying to get that seated. Um, it does come with this wee, actually very useful screwdriver. And there are four screws on the bed that you actually will level it to. Um, and it's funny how they're like so far in and not on the edge. So, but yeah, so that's what you raise and lower it with. It's very difficult to actually do it while it's printing because obviously you're putting a screwdriver straight in the path of the printer. Where like a regular printer, you can just adjust the knobs underneath during that first few layers and make sure you get that dialed in perfectly. Can't do it with this printer. So if it screws up, you gotta start again. Speaking of starting again, can't really do that because again, this is a start and a pause button, not a stop button. So what happened was, is I had a print going. Uh, I wasn't liking the way it was going, so I hit this in order to, what I thought, stop it. I moved the print bed out of the way, pulled off the build mat, which is kind of a pain to get off. I mean, it is super thick magnet, uh, but it is just a like regular old roll of magnet sheet. So I pulled the print off, put this back on, which kind of got to line up, make sure it gets over those holes, and those screw holes. Put that back on, hit the button again to start, and it just continued from in the back, from wherever it was, it just continued to print right there. I was like, what the heck, stop. Did it again, tried it again, still didn't do it. So what happens is, because you only have one button, it only prints the most recent file on the SD card. So you can have 50 on there, it only prints the most recent. So you pretty much should only leave one file on there to make sure you're printing the proper thing. So I went ahead, unplugged it, plugged it back in because uh, there's also no power switch anywhere. So when it's plugged in, it's on. When it's not, it's off. That's it. That's, that's the control you get with this machine. Did that, hit start again, and it just continued on. All right, fine. So I took the SD card out, powered it on, put the SD card in, then hit print. Same thing. So I took the SD card to my computer, formatted it, wiped everything off of it, re-sliced, put the file back on, then started it. Then it finally started printing the file from the beginning again. Huge pain in the butt to have to restart a print. It should not be that hard in my opinion, but it is. Another thing I don't like, again, I noted it earlier, is that there's no part cooling fan. So no matter how good you think you are printing with PLA, it is going to look subpar. But to anybody with any type of cooling whatsoever on a 3D printer, it just, it needs cooling. Uh, I know that Neri's, uh, he went ahead and put a fan here and it blew on it and his print came out fantastic. I do not want to have to go and find a little fan or a little, a, either a little 40 millimeter fan like mount on here or to go and get a desktop fan like a 120 millimeter, 140 millimeter fan to sit here to blow on it. It's ludicrous. It should be built in. Every printer in this price point has a part cooling fan. Every one of them. So I don't understand why this one doesn't. I just don't understand why it doesn't. Price. I really don't like about this machine. It is $160 on sale. It's supposedly lists for like $225 or something goofy like that. This is a $60 printer. This is a toy, 100% a toy, just like a 3D printing pen is a toy as well. It is, this is not something that you are gonna buy to get magnificent prints off. And I'll show you a few here. They just, they just aren't. So if this was $60 for a kid, we're talking the right price there. I like it for a kid because the the hot and the nozzle is barely exposed and what is has mostly silicone on it and then just the very tip is open for open air and that is where the plastic comes out of the nozzle orifice. So you can't really get your, your hand in while it's printing. So for younger kids, you know, six, seven, eight that are getting into 3D printing, if this was $60, I absolutely could see buying them their own and they could kind of play with it and print things. But again, they're not gonna get anything great out of it. For actually $10 less now, you can get the Ender 3. For 10 to $15 or 10 to $20 more, depending on the sale, you can get an Ender 3 Pro. The cheapest I saw one was $180 or $185. Again, I don't know why anybody would spend $160 on this machine because it is not worth that whatsoever. And it's also, it's not like, uh, Easy 3D like invented this machine. This is an M3D clone apparently. So I didn't actually know that when I agreed to to uh, review it because I never got the M3D micro, I think is what they called it. Um, and this is, the, this is exactly this machine, just a rebranded sticker on the front of it. So it was a bad machine when they made it. 
it's a bad machine now that Easy 3D is, is uh, has it. So yeah, uh, the, one of the one last thing I'll go over before I'm actually going to start this, uh, kill this off, is that this spool holder, where it, it's 3D printed. I don't mind that. I don't mind 3D printed parts. Um, I do like the way that it latches on. It's very satisfying clip to kind of lock on there. It's tiny. It is absolutely micro. I ended up using, I think, a small spool from another printer in order to get this to print. And even the small AO robotic spools don't fit on this properly. They kind of roll, I mean, they, they do fit, but they, they have to be sandwiched and they kind of roll on the actual frame of the printer. So you would have to make, a, if you bought a, bowl, a spool of Hatchbox, you would have to go make something. You cut this box, put a, a rod through it, and then use this box as your spool holder until you could do something. Because you can't print anything big enough on this anyway, so you're going to have to find out a weird way to hold a full kilogram roll. So again, I don't know what they were thinking on, on doing this. Why not just include 3D printed parts? They cost, it would cost, what, 10 cents to print out an actual spool holder for somebody? Uh, that could hold a kilogram spool maybe? I, I'm not sure about a lot of the decisions that were made for this machine. All I know is, is that it's definitely not one for me or most anybody else out there. So before I go, I will talk about software. It comes with a very, very, very old version of Cura, which I think is version 15, as before they went back to the single digits. It's 2019 and we're on version, what, 3.4 or 4 point something now in for Cura? Like it's gone through a lot of iterations in the past year. This is still shipping with that old version. I can only get this to work with that old version of Cura. I could not get it with the most up-to-date version. I also could not get it to work with Simplify 3D. If it can't work with Simplify 3D, it's not a real printer, in my opinion. I can get anything to print on that. I have over 20 printers configured and working well with hundreds of types of filament in Simplify 3D. But this little thing doesn't work well with it at all. And I don't think using a old version of software is valid anywhere in any way, shape or form in 2019. You should be using the most current version or at least one recent and or you should have download links to be able to get people to the current version with a good profile that works. Especially if you're gonna put this out to kids and whatnot. You need to have a profile already made that people can just download and throw in a folder and it works. If that's what you're shooting for, for kids and, and education, things like that, that's what you need. It's not what this came with though. So it was a huge miss by them and I'd hope to see them print out something better later. So if you guys found this video, whether or not you're gonna buy this machine, again, it's not a recommended, uh, but if you are, if you can pick it up for like 50, 60 bucks for a six, seven year old, maybe it'd be worth it then. Uh, I'd like to hear from you guys either way on how you guys think this printer was or how it worked for you or didn't work for you. I'd like to get a little bit of feedback on what you guys thought. Someone that's not tied to actually receiving a printer or anything. I was not paid for this review. I don't get an affiliate link. I mean, I could link AliExpress, but I'm not getting paid for any of this. Um, I am very surprised that other YouTubers have actually recommended this machine to people. Again, slash $100 off for a six-year-old, it's great. Other than that, huge walk by. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thumbs down if you didn't. Either way, talk in the comments down below. I would love to hear what you guys thought about this printer. So if you guys want to stay in tune with what's going on, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get notifications when I upload new content or do any live streams. That way you're one of the first ones to know. If you want to support me out financially, you can become a patron, donate a dollar or more. You get access to my Patreon feed and the after show. Otherwise, you can help out. There's some one-time donation links or there's a bunch of fill links with some coupon codes on there as well. Save yourself some money. And also what you buy with those links, a little slice of that comes back to me at no cost to you. So I appreciate everyone that uses those. You really do help out. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Until next time, happy printing.